Today we're ranking the top 10 starting fives from every NBA team. As always, we're assuming everyone's healthy, as in if they just returned from their injuries. And it was a hard list to put together because there's so many great starting lineups right now that a lot of them got pushed back further in this list than I would have liked. But hopefully once you see the entire video, all the rankings make sense. And with that said, here's number 10. In the Portland Trailblazers with Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum, Kent Bazemore, Zach Collins, and Yusuf Nurkic. This one was a tough one because there were a few teams that could have gone into this last spot. But ultimately it had to go to the Blazers because no matter what their five has been the past few seasons, they're always a winning team mainly thanks to CJ and Dame. They win games and now they've got a better starting lineup than they've had in the past few years. And with this team, Rodney Hood could be starting instead of Bazemore, but I really think that Kent should because a 3 and D guy like himself fits in great here. They do lose out some credibility for having Zach Collins as power forward, but Yusuf Nurkic quickly makes up for it, especially if he comes out as a more developed player this season. Overall though, I think this Blazers squad is going to have great chemistry on the court and have a solid mix of offense and defense that's going to make them a real threat in the postseason. Number 9 goes to the Utah Jazz, with their 5 of Mike Conley, Donovan Mitchell, Joe Ingles, Bojan Bogdanovic, and Rudy Gobert. Alright, putting the Blazers at 10 was tough, but having to put the Jazz at 9 hurt. I love this Jazz team, and they're one of the top teams I want to see succeed most this season. And right now they have their best chance at doing so, as a real contending team with Conley and Mitchell leading the way on offense, Ingles being able to shoot as well as he can, Bojan being a phenomenal two-way player, especially on the defensive end, and Gobert dominating down low and also on defense. They really couldn't ask for much more as a starting five. Everyone on this roster and their playstyles complement each other, and they're one of the teams I'm most excited to see play. Their only real weakness right off the bat is the fact that they're going to have to be playing small, but I mean most teams in the league today do that anyways, so I think they'll be fine. Honestly though, this team really can become title contenders if things go as planned. They just didn't rank that high right now because currently as things stand they have no current all-stars and no superstar level players, whereas the rest of the teams ranked ahead of them do. Number 8, the Nuggets and Jamal Murray, Gary Harris, Torrey Craig, Jeremy Grant, and Nikola Jokic. Now, Paul Millsap and Jeremy Grant can be interchangeable here, but I'd like to see Grant as a starter. He's younger, quicker, and can play at a faster pace with the rest of their starters. But yeah, I've talked about how great Murray and Jokic fit together. Gary Harris does a little bit of everything, Torrey Craig can lock down the other team's best player, then Grant was a great pickup and spaces the floor perfectly. I mean, this five only ranks in at number 8, but if we're talking about entire rosters as a whole, they may very well rank in at number 1, with everyone they have on their bench. But since it is only starting fives, we gotta just focus on these guys. And really all it's gonna take for the Nuggets to win a championship is time. They're one of the youngest teams in the league with all of the talent in the world, and they just need experience to get to that next level. For this five to be ranked higher in the future, I'd like to see them replace Craig with someone a little better on offense, and maybe make a move for a third star player. Number 7 goes to the Brooklyn Nets for Kyrie Irving, Karis LeVert, Joe Harris, Kevin Durant, and DeAndre Jordan. And they're another team you might have expected to be ranked higher, but they got a lot of competition ahead of them. And there's no indication that Karis and Harris will be the starters with KD playing power forward, but it was my guess at it. Personally, I would also have Jared Allen starting, but I don't know if that'll actually happen by the looks of things. As for this actual five though, they're all surprisingly great fits together. Kyrie's proven that he can play with a small forward because he played great with LeBron, and KD's done the same thing with point guards by playing even better with Russ and Steph Curry. And they both now have a solid center with one of the league's best shooters, and then a wild card player in Levert who could thrive with all of his extra opportunities or get lost in the mix, which hopefully doesn't happen. The only real questions here are how KD can play when he returns, and how good this team's chemistry will be with adding two new superstar players to the mix. And it's why I was hesitant to put Brooklyn in higher. A team that won't have that problem though is number 6 because they basically have the same 5 as they did last year in the Milwaukee Bucks with Eric Bledsoe, Wes Matthews, Chris Middleton, Giannis, and Brooke Lopez. Overall this Milwaukee team is great. They've implemented a system that revolves entirely around their league MVP and it's proven to work. And that's why the starting lineup gets as much credit as it does here. I'm a fan of their system but not a huge fan of who's in it right now. I mean I wish they would have gotten a point guard that could shoot a 
little better than Bledsoe instead of resigning him. And then they lost Malcolm Brogdon and replaced him with Wes Matthews. They have max contract Chris Middleton, who I'm sure they're praying takes his game to the next level this season. And then finally, Brooke Lopez, who really makes things work with his shooting. And it's a bunch of solid players, but I mean, they need more star power. I mean, they could have kept the same system, but gotten another star who's great in their role instead of four players who are all average or slightly above it. So now hopefully Giannis can lead this team to a championship one day because it's fully going to rely on him and his development thanks to this team now being locked into big contracts for the next few years. Number five, the Clippers with Patrick Beverly, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Mo Harkless, and Zubak. I mean, right away, the front court's pretty weak and Pat Beverly is a great fit here, but he's not a star player or anything. So there's a big drop off after the duo of Kawhi and PG-13. But like I've said before, I think this could be the best duo in the league, which is why these guys still rank in at number five, even though they don't have the best big men. They would rank a lot higher though if Lou Williams and Montrez Harrell weren't gonna still come off the bench though. I mean, a lineup of Beverly, Lou Williams, Kawhi, PG, and Montrez is a lot more intimidating. And while this probably will be the lineup to close out games, that's not their five for this video. But overall, their actual five will be exciting because there's a lot of things we have to wait and see. Like how well PG and Kawhi play off each other since they basically play the exact same role on the court. We'll see how destructive the two of them are on defense alongside Pat Beverly, and we'll see just how well all five of these guys work together. I think it'll work out great because Kawhi and PG really don't need much around them to excel since they both always make their teammates better no matter who they are. Number four, the Rockets with Russell Westbrook, James Harden, Eric Gordon, PJ Tucker and Clint Capella. There's a ton of people hyped up for this new look Rockets team and with this starting five there's a great reason to be. I mean not only is the system they've been running built for James Harden but it's the exact system that Russell Westbrook has needed to succeed. I've mentioned in other videos that I don't know if this whole thing's gonna work and these guys can coexist which I'm still not too sure about but I mean if they can make it work I have to admit that we're talking about these guys having the ability to be NBA champions next year. With this same lineup and Chris Paul, they were one game away from the NBA Finals and the second best team in the Western Conference for years. With it being worth mentioning that CP3 was also a ball dominant point guard coming in and everyone said it would never work from the start. And when you're looking at it from that perspective going into this season, adding Westbrook to the roster, it definitely makes this one of the things to look forward to the most. Plus I will say that I really think it's a make or break for them this year. If it doesn't work out this season, I don't know that it ever will. So it would be time for them to look into switching things up with the role players on the roster. But like I said, for now, these three guys are perfect complements to Russ and Harden, which is why they rank as high as they do. And speaking of perfect complements, that's the reason number three belongs to the Golden State Warriors, with Steph Curry, D'Angelo Russell, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, and Willie Colley Stein. Again, this is assuming if everybody has just come back healthy, and there's no way that you can discredit this roster. Steph, Klay, and Draymond were the pieces around what was going to be that original Warriors dynasty before Kevin Durant came ruined it all. But these were the guys that won the championship in 2015, and it's why I had to put them slightly ahead of Houston. I mean, it hurts though that they had Iguodala back then, and his top tier defense, and they've now replaced him in the five with D'Angelo. But I mean, for how good Clay and Draymond have become on defense, it really helps make up for the loss. It's gonna be real interesting to see how things work out with D'Angelo and Clay on the court together, with them having as much offense as they will, and being able to see if they can make it work. Hopefully it works great, but again, we'll see. The Warriors are a team though, that their starters are ranked higher than their whole roster would be in a video about the best rosters. Because I mean, they lost all their role players this off season, which is why a lot of people have already counted them out. I mean, they lost Andre, Livingston, Cook, and Jordan Bell. And that's if we're just talking about the role players. So it's understandable. But there's still a lot of questions here. Like if Steph can return to an MVP form, can Draymond return to an all-star level? And can D'Angelo Russell thrive and take his game to another level again this year, which is all still yet to be seen. Another thing still yet to be seen though is just how good the starting lineup of number two will be. For the Philadelphia 76ers with Ben Simmons, Josh Richardson, Tobias Harris, Al Horford, and Joel Embiid. I really considered Philly for the number one spot and switched them here at the last second. I mean, they really have five potential all-stars. 
I mean, Simmons and Embiid are definitely going to make the team, but Richardson, Harris, and Horford all have just as big of a chance of joining them there. Richardson's a great two-way player who could break out if used right. Tobias Harris is in the same great position now that Jimmy Butler's not in his role anymore. Al Horford's consistent in every category as always, and Embiid will be as dominant as ever. But I mean, there's more questions with a lineup like this one than there is for the team in the number one spot, which is why they ended up here. Because of the uncertainties like how Richardson could get lost in the mix, Tobias Harris did that last year so it could happen again, Ben Simmons probably won't come out shooting like Steph Curry this year, even if he does shoot threes, and we don't know if Embiid will stay healthy. So we're giving them the number two spot for now, which means that number one goes to the Los Angeles Lakers. For their lineup of LeBron James, Danny Green, Kyle Kuzma, Anthony Davis, and JaVale McGee. Now nothing confirmed on whether or not LeBron will be playing point guard, but it was rumored a few weeks ago and it makes their five look better so that's how I left it, but honestly this is a championship lineup if I've ever seen one. Two superstars in LeBron and AD, who will be a top two duo in the NBA, Kyle Kuzma who could without a doubt be an all-star, and is the perfect player to fit into a Chris Bosh type of role in a big three, Danny Green who's an elite level role player that fits in and on any championship team, and JaVale McGee, who's really turned things around and fits in perfectly with everyone. I mean, first off, I have to say that the pace that this team is going to play at for their size is going to be crazy. They're going to be extremely fast up and down the court, and if we're talking about from a playoff perspective, there's really only a couple of teams in the league that can even compete with a lineup like this one. And with them being able to put these five guys all on the court at the same time, it makes it hard to argue that anyone could really beat the Lakers in a seven game series. All they have to hope for now is that they have good team chemistry. And that wraps up the rankings. Definitely comment your thoughts, and if you disagree, comment who you think should be ranked where. Even if you do disagree with these rankings though, drop a like and subscribe so you don't miss my next videos coming soon.